as a kid, you're going to get lots of advice. Oh, you did receive lots of advice from many different places. It has been my experience that a lot of it was really not worth receiving. However, all of it was somewhere along the way worth considering. If I had my way over again, I would ignore a lot of the advice I got and I would have pursued more diligently that advice which I accepted one way or the other. At school I was a hopeless dropout. I did have a, a bad speech problem, of course, but um, that didn't deter me from the hunger to learn and the hunger to know new stuff. I didn't like the way they, they taught it in those days. It was all rote. And uh, it didn't seem to mean anything other than trying to prove you've got a memory. I was always trying to prove that I have an ability to think, mm -hmm. come up with original thought. And original thought can get you into trouble. But my advice to anybody growing up is be fearless about what you're going to do. Accept the advice, much like you would a pilot of a jet, uh, a jet flying through the air, a combat jet, say, and you're looking at the variable speed, you're looking at the wind speed, you're looking at uh, the drag factor, and you're looking at where the enemy is. You're taking a lot of stuff into account so that you might survive. Well, life's not too different to that growing up. Everybody is going to be shooting advice at you. Deflect what it is that doesn't sound right, or if it sounds adventurous, yeah, give it a hit. But there's a lot of temptation out there that is not worth the risk. Lots of them. Um, speeding aimlessly on the freeway. Um, doing too much alcohol or drugs. These are all things that are very exhilarating at the time, but they never give back to you at the end of the day. That's a problem. At the end of the day, could they could actually uh, give you back your own death certificate. Not a good idea. Um, education is something that is is pushed very heavily for all all grown for kids growing up, including myself. Uh, much of which I rejected, um, and uh, I tried to always think originally, come up with a plan that didn't involve uh, memorizing somebody else's idea of what you should be thinking. Um, if you can come up with one original idea in your life, I think that's extraordinary, if you can make something of it. You don't have to come up with a new idea every day or every month or every year. Actually, only come up with one good one in your entire life and then pursue it with a passion. Which brings me to another point. If you're going to do something, do it with all your heart. Do it with your every last ounce of energy. That's providing that that's what you want to do. Pursue it very hard. Give it everything you have. Because if you give something everything you have and you fail, uh, then it's a righteous failure, really. You gave it all, you experience from it. So you pursue it and you go on from there. The, um, the idea of failure is driven home far too often in modern society. Failure should failure is a you should consider failure as one step short of success. Sometimes you have to fail ten times before you get to attempt eleven, which becomes successful. But the eleventh attempt became successful because of all the education that you gave yourself by the ten failures. This is something not really driven home enough to young people today that failure is okay. 
as long as you tried and gave it everything you had. That's the key to life. And that'll be the key to your life no matter what you do. Getting a job, getting married, having children, trying to inspire the children you have, you may fail. But give it your best shot. And they will recognize that somewhere along. My father was, uh, was a wonderful guy. He was a great entrepreneur, a tremendous influence on my life one way or the other. Although he beat me up quite a few times and sent me to hospital once or twice, but nothing I didn't really deserve. I tested him and he tested me until he said to me one day, you're out of here. And I said, Dad, you're right. And, uh, but he, before he kicked me out, he did give me lots of lots of uh, material to work with in life. Taught me how to be, be a businessman. Taught me how to be honest to myself as well as to others. Taught me the beauty of living and enjoying and achieving. These are wonderful things. He didn't like my passions, which is riding horses and shooting guns and, and um, being crazy. Oh, what he considered crazy, I considered it was normal behaviour. Um, but he was trying and he was giving me his influence and he was a very hard worker and I noticed that. He delivered milk and ice in this little town that I was in and he'd wake me up at five o'clock in the morning and, and uh, if I didn't get out of bed right away, he'd rev his truck up out in front of the house and, and then drive off. And when he came for breakfast, he'd say, yeah, did you enjoy laying in bed? while I went out and earned your daily bread. Did you enjoy that? Well, I was telling him I was tired, you know how it was. <clears throat> but I didn't accept all of his advice. He wanted me to be a builder, to work as a labourer uh, and a building site. I didn't want that, I wanted to be a writer, which appalled him greatly. His idea of a writer was some girl sitting at a typewriter, clicking away. He said, you could do something more adventurous than write. What a useless thing. Build, build something. Use your muscles. He says, you've got good muscles and you've got lots of energy. Build something. <clears throat> well, I couldn't see myself digging ditches and building, building what he wanted to build. I wanted to uh, read classics and try and imitate my hero, Jack London, which I did in the bush very well, uh, and uh, build a career on it. But uh, being the wise man that he was, he recognised my achievement, although it wasn't the achievement that he had envisaged for me. Um, and uh, when I was 27, and by this time very famous, and I'm all over the world, and I'm Australia, one of Australia's youngest, most famous journalists, we walked down the street of Mariba, and he stopped in the middle of this little street, and he says, you know, I'm so proud of you. You didn't do what I wanted, you did what you wanted. And he says, by God, he says, you made a success of it, so I'm proud of you. I would never have thought that writing could achieve that. But then again, we walked along a bit, a bit longer and he said, you know, he says, you would have been a fine builder too. I said, yeah, probably would have been. <laughs> that was my dad. But my, but my advice to young people is to listen to older people because they've been there. They've been knocked around and they've fallen down and they've got up again and they've fought another round and... and uh, we, are in, we should be encouraged to get up off the canvas of life because you'll get knocked down there regularly. But it's only a canvas and it's not too far from where you were standing. And it's not going to hurt you. The canvas is not going to bite you. You've got to get up and go another round in life. Because life is life's for the people who want to enjoy and take risks. Enjoy and take risks. These are the two things. And if you are taking risks, you are actually enjoying. 
stretch yourself as thin as you can before you snap. And of course you won't snap because you'll have practiced this stretching out a bit. It's like uh, enduring uh, life is like any other exercise. You've, unless you use a muscle, you'll lose it. And that's the same with your imagination and your drive. Do not be afraid of failure. Failure is your friend. Failure is what what is out there for you. And failure is your teacher in life. So go for it. Rack up as much opportunity and as much adventure as you can. And forget about being the richest person in the room, that's pretty shallow. However, to aspire to be the most interesting person in the room, that's a good aspiration. And if you reach that aspiration, you will automatically become the richest person in the room. Well, there you have it. I'm Colin Dangard. And thanks for joining me while I shoot my mouth off. It's been a lot of fun. And if you uh, tell your friends, and and uh, we'll provide a link with you, a link to you, so you can hook it, hook all your friends in, and let's rock and roll here together. Thanks, mate.